Okay, so in this video, I thought it would be fun to create kind of a techy sci-fi looking render uh, using JSplacement. Now, if you haven't heard of JSplacement, uh, it is a little kind of tool slash plug plugin that you can download for free to create a lot of really interesting texture maps, displacement maps, you name. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's actually what we're going to be creating or something similar. It doesn't look like much now, but if we uh, kick off the render, um, this is ultimately what we're going to try and recreate or something very similar here. Okay. Uh, now the first thing we need to do is download Jace placement. And if you, uh, Google Jace placement, um, one of the first hits is windmill, um, digital art. And if you scroll down, you can come down here to products and then choose Jace placement. There's some other interesting ones as well. The, I haven't actually looked into these, but, um, the, Filing fluid very texture seems really interesting. And then you can click on JS placement um, and decide how you want to download it, whether you want to do installer or a portable. And they have it for other operating systems other than a, a PC. From there, what we're going to do is actually start JS placement. So once you've downloaded it, which I already have, you can then open it. Uh, and this is what we get, uh, our little program here. Um, we can click on the top left to come to the menu and decide which pattern we want to start with. And we can just check out a couple of these here like JSpace, Jace placement uh, classic. And so perhaps you've seen this type of pattern before. Um, you can control the number of iterations, which is how kind of complicated it is, how bright it is for the background, which is the very back of this, um, as well as you know what shapes you want here. So if you want really big ones, you can turn those off. And you can see what each of these um, does and you know how it adds to our um, finished map here. And each of these has controls for the brightness. Um, if you want it to have any kind of transparency, which in this case is really just kind of the values it's using as well uh, in the scale. Uh, and so you can do that for a lot of these. It's all pretty straightforward, but it really does allow you to make some interesting maps. And each time you change something, it does generate a new one. It does look different. So that is something to keep in mind. And when you are done, you can then come through and save out a height map. You can save out a normal map um, if that's what you want to do. Um, and you can also add color if you want to do that. Now, that's not something I do a lot of, but I do think it's very interesting to just start to visualize uh, the colors we may want to work with here. And perhaps one of these will work for you, uh, but I want to be able to add the color um, myself here. And so while I could just save a separate color and, and non-color version, um, ultimately, uh, actually, I don't like having uh, the color there, all right? Because like I said, I like to get myself. So just briefly looking at some of these other options, you'll see that they have their own kind of unique look and can give us some really interesting results. Um, you know, so definitely worth playing around with, exploring these a bit more than I'm doing right now. Um, because there are some really interesting options, like I said. Um, I really like dot grid as well. That is one we're going to be um, working with here. And I like this just because it's really, once again, interesting pattern um, that we can adjust the scale on, brightness on, and choose which shapes we want to work with. So uh, what I've done is gone ahead and saved a dot grid out. So just hit saved height, came in here. And there's my dot grid image. And then um, I went to the classic tab and after kind of messing around with it, saved out a height and a normal map uh, from here. Okay, and with that, we can now jump back to Cinema 4D and um, I'm gonna start a new scene, but I am gonna take my dome light, play, oh, some of this stuff with me. So honestly, why don't we just start uh, this. So I'll get rid of the cube for the dome light. Um, I just created a dome light after switching my renderer to Redshift. Created a dome light, and this HDR is actually from um, the asset browser. All right, and this is just a normal plane. And we'll get rid of all of the other stuff here. So I have a camera, and the camera is just kind of looking down at the plane to fill out um, our scene so we don't see beyond it. Uh, and now we can get started. I'll keep this in here just for reference, but we will start anew. All right, so here's my material. 
name this. And honestly, um, with the way they've organized this new material uh, manager editor, I actually think um, either the lines like this look good or the dots, but making them smaller and that way I can fit more of them, but also don't need it to take as much um, space up. All right, so I don't, you know, either one I think works, but I think you get more materials potentially if you do this. So, all right, let's load in our textures and Honestly, I can just drag them in from say Explore or Finder. And I know this is happening off screen, but if you just select your textures and then drag them into the node editor window, they will show up here and they will also be named. So that can be um, you know, a nice little tip if you've never done that before. It also makes it easier to follow kind of what texture is what, um, cause they are named though this one, the names are so long, it really doesn't help um, in that regard. So let's start with, our normal map. I'm going to connect this normal map using a bump map node. I know that might seem counterintuitive, but that's the way we do it. So I'm going to connect it to the texture input here and then to the overall bump map. Make sure I apply this material to a plane. And this is just your standard plane, right? 10 segments. I'm, I think I made it a bit larger, but nothing um, terribly crazy going on there. Let's also Dock this just down here for now. So we can see this, this material might get a little bit complex. So anything we can do to stay organized, the better we can see it. And I go, can go ahead and start uh, my render here. Cool. So not too bad. I may want this to be a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna select my texture tag and have it tile. We'll start with three. We can always do this later. And the advantage of having it um, or, or telling it to tile in the texture tag as opposed to say in the scale properties of our texture here is that uh, I only have to do this once and it will apply to all of the different textures inside here. Whereas if I just did it to the normal map, um, if I wanted them all to kind of line up and be the same, I would have to change the scale in each of them. So not a huge deal, but something to think about. So there is um, our normal map looking pretty good. I may also just come in here and adjust the reflection roughness a little bit, say around 0.3 or so, just to soften up those reflections. Um, I think it's, I also lowered the intensity of my dome light here. So if you're trying to recreate this, that might be uh, something else you want to do. And now what I'm gonna do is take our main node and we'll actually start by just creating displacement from it. And so to create displacement, going to need a displacement node. So I'll create that, connect it to the text map, which I don't understand why text map and texture aren't the same. Um, and displacement, that node actually gets connected to um, our output node, not the material itself. And we're not seeing anything here. And I just did a video not too long ago about how to set up displacement. So this might be, um, similar to what you saw previously if you watched that video. And if you haven't, I'll go a little bit quicker just because I have already demonstrated or shown this before. Um, on our plane, I've added a redshift object tag. I need to go into the geometry section and check override. Now, all you want is displacement, great. Um, I can do that here, um, but I need, if this is all I'm doing to create displacement, I would need to add a lot more segments manually um, to get it to actually look right. Uh, now I do have these properties here and if I was to increase them, we'd probably start to see some displacement. Uh, we may also need to come in and adjust our maximum displacement and displacement scale. And these do work together though it may not look like it. So if I set both to five, you can see we're starting to get something but there still isn't a lot of definition or detail and that's because this still isn't enough uh, geometry, enough segments. Um, but I don't want to create them manually because this geometry will always have that many segments. What I want to do is have Redshift kind of tessellate or create that additional geometry for me as needed. Okay. And um, I'm going to lower the uh, minimum edge length. I'm also going to uncheck smooth subdivision. Uh, that would keep things more like a subdivision surface it's where it's going to round things out. And we definitely don't want that on our plane. I can also increase the maximum subdivisions. And I'm gonna go quite high with that to say something like 12. 
And now we're getting something that's looking a lot better. The um, values here are much more crisp on um, the edges, I should say, on a lot of this. And so I think that's looking pretty good. All right. And we also get auto bump mapping, which um, you might want to turn on or off. Notice how um, it really makes a big difference here with my reflections and all of that. So, you know, if we have a normal map, do we really need this? Um, who's to say, but I actually kind of like it. Speaking of that, I did forget to do that in my bump map here, or our normal map, I should say, and that is uh, to change the input height here to tangent space normal. Um, if we just leave it on height field, uh, it is going to be expecting a bump map, and we want to set this to tangent space normal. So I'm glad I caught that. And honestly, makes it look a little bit strange. So why don't we lower the bump of the normal map amount here? Um, I don't know if it's the normal maps out of Jace placement or what, but uh, it's not looking amazing here. Okay. Something else I could have done as well, potentially tried, would be to actually use our height map as a normal map. Now that's kind of what um, the auto bump map is doing. Okay, so it's perhaps a bit re redundant to what we're seeing here. Um, but that might be another way to achieve a different look, especially if we weren't using displacement. All right, so now we have that, which honestly looks like our normal map. So just something we could potentially do. Uh, you could also in chase placement, you, you know, use different combinations of maps. Um, you know, turn certain one, uh, certain these on or off. So you do have to be a bit careful because it changes. Um, instead, what I'm really doing for that is actually using a different map altogether, using the dot grid um, on top of uh, this pattern for the emission, as we'll see here um, very shortly. So this is looking good, okay, um, and. What I'm going to do now, there's really no way to, to avoid getting these, these, you know, wires to cross here. So I apologize. Um, I do think I want these further out though, since this is pretty much all there will be, but I can connect this to our diffuse color. And that looks pretty interesting. And depending on what I wanted to do color wise, this might work, but if we wanted to work with the colors, what I can do is add a ramp or add in some color. And I can take this ramp and actually drop it onto the connection there. And so it'll go in between. Really shouldn't change things too much for me. Um, but now what I can do is use our ramp here to add color. Okay. And what it'll do is take um, the darker values and make them this value, black. In this case, we are mapping to black and white. We are now mapping to white. So nothing changed. But if I come in here to the white and add, say, red, you can see now that the brighter values, the white, um, gets mapped uh, to that red value. And I can shift this however I want. So I can clamp it down so we get just a little bit of red. We don't get really a lot of in-between values. Um, or I can add completely different colors in here. So maybe some of the grays can now be, all right, let's not make this Christmas-y, Christmas at least not yet, blue. So you can, you know, add however many colors you want here, shift the, the points around um, to get some interesting combinations. You can also just use any of the presets um, that we have in our ramps here. So, you know, maybe something like sky um, could look pretty good. Okay. Actually does look kind of cool. Ah, uh, but I really just want something like this and I'm going to maybe kind of clamp down that color a little bit. So that's looking good. Um, what I also may want to do at this point is add depth of field. So I'm going to right click on my camera, go to camera tags and choose RS camera. And with that tag selected, go to the Boca tab, check override and check enabled. Now that actually kind of gave me the exact depth of field I wanted. Um, because I set up the settings in camera. So I, I'm taking the focus distance and circle of confusion radius from our camera settings and those settings being the focus distance. Uh, so what we can do is with the focus distance, choose the, the picker here. And now any part of my image I want, we can make the in focus. So that's how we can choose what we want is in focus. And then in the physical section, we can adjust how much depth, 
depth of field by adjusting the F stop. Okay, so I had to use, um, you know, a different value, but the default of, you know, eight for the F stop um, isn't doing a whole lot. And, you know, depending on how big your scene is will determine what values make sense. And it's one of the reasons why it's, it can be very useful to work in realistic scale as then these values should work more like you would expect in real life on a real camera. But I want something like, I think I had 0.6 before. We can always come back and adjust this later though. So this is looking pretty good. And what we can do now is use our dot grid image that I created to start adding some emission. So what I'll do is connect this to our material, go to overall and choose emission. All right now I need to select the material, go to the overall section and add some emission weight. So I'll just set this to two. And we can see those dots coming through now. They are white. And we can use that same kind of ramp technique to color them. So I'll choose ramp, drag it onto our connection, into our emission property there, and select that ramp and then make the white not whatever color I want. Now in my the example I had, I did use yellow. So maybe we push that a little bit more towards orange. And there we go. Once again, how bright or how much light those gives, give off is determined by our emission weight. So I can bump that up a bit. And that's looking pretty good. Another thing I did is in my Redshift camera tag is added some bloom. All right, so I can check override, check enabled. Now, because I'm also using my perspective view, we need to make sure we enable post effects. I had already done that, but wanted to mention that to you all. And I can increase the intensity and then adjust the threshold here. And that threshold value actually does tie into kind of the pixel values here, as well as the um, emission values we're using. So, the, you know, I need to get that threshold closer to my emission. We'll start to see. Some glow. All right, so getting some nice kind of nice localized glowing there. Had to go quite a bit lower, but that is okay. Um, we may need to come back and make adjustments here uh, because now what we're gonna do uh, is take this uh, a little bit forward. I think this looks pretty cool and you know we could leave it here, but we can definitely push this further as you saw. The first thing I'm gonna do is combine my colored image with um, our dots for the emission so that these red areas emit some light. And I'm gonna use a color mix for that. I'm gonna search for that node. Just drag that one in since I really don't have a great place to drop it on an existing connection. So this can be input two. This can be input one. I'm gonna take that and put that into the emission. And we can see this gets much brighter. Actually looks really neat. So I don't dislike this, but we did lose all of our dots um, and we can get them back by adjusting the mix amount here. So zero is gonna be um, this first image. Uh, one will be our dots. So wherever we want in between will give us a combination of both. And I don't necessarily like the, the color mix here because I feel like you don't get there, there's no way to get 100% of both. You're, you're only getting half, right? Like I really would like this um, with the dots and you don't get that with uh, the mix amount here being set to 50. Um, it, there are definitely other modes or, or options we could use. We could even use this mix amount here as well to kind of help um, control this, but this will work for right now. And I do like how we are getting some variation in here. I wish we were getting more of the yellow though. So I may kind of cheat this a little bit more towards the, the dots. And if I need to, I can always come back and increase my emission weight, okay, to get a little bit more. So ideally we get something where we have kind of the best of both worlds. So yeah, that's looking pretty good. Another thing we could try and do is add some, um, refraction slash transmission, or try and make these red areas transparent. Um, this can be a little bit tricky to see with 
the emission, so we may want to turn that off. So I will just turn that off, even though we just got it set up the way we like. And I will take my ramp, my colored image here, and plug that into our refraction and transmission color. Now, in order to really see this, we need to come into our base properties and increase our refraction and transmission weight. So that looks okay. All right. You know, another thing we could do is take our original image here and plug it into the weight. Um, let's see if that gives us a little bit different and or better um, result. Let's get rid of the color now. See just the weight. So that's kind of more of what I was looking for. Uh, the downside of using just this, using the weight here, is we, we don't have that color, right? So, you know, could I connect this back to the refraction and transmission color? Absolutely. I don't think I'm getting quite as much of that, um, you know, transparent look, which is fine. We'll get the color back, though, with our emission. So that can give us a little bit more depth here. Okay, I'm not sure it made a huge difference, but it seems like we now have a little bit of variety um, with the, the values that are being used here, which I think is a good thing. No problem with that. And really, I think that is going to about do it. We ended up with this really cool looking sci-fi-esque type thing. And you could apply this to other pieces of geometry. Um, you could, you know, combine this with other textures. One thing I, th um, I have experimented with and done in the past is taken my dot grid, mixed it with a noise, and animated the noise so that these lights would kind of flicker on and off and change um, brightness values. And you could do the same thing with, you know, the red here and really have a lot of this change and animate and, you know, make a very nice looking animation. So that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you want to see, please let me know and take care.